after learning about cybersecurity, we now move into our next partner presentation, the increasing role of technology and network in compliance. And joining us on this virtual platform is Rohit Razdan, Chief Business Officer, Clear. So without further ado, over to you, sir. Thank you, Dipti. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm gonna talk about uh, two things that I think are, are now uh, converging at a very fast pace. Uh, one is compliance and another is technology. Uh, we play uh, Clear, uh, formerly known as ClearTax. We play uh, at the intersection of these two broader trends and would be lovely to take you guys through uh, what we see happening in the industry through our eyes. So, <clears throat> so fundamentally, if you see, right, uh, for an Indian business, and most of you are aware, uh, there's around 170 uh, compliances that you have to follow uh, to be able to run, a, you know, a 100% compliant business, right? Now, it is something that every business wants to do. I, I don't think at this point of time, people are very lax about it, but it is extremely challenging to do because of, you know, multiple reasons, right? Now, what what used to happen in terms of compliance and especially taxation uh, is that it used to be a completely separate part of the CFO's office and compared to all the other parts of procurement and supply chain and so on. Uh, given the the direction that the government has taken in the in the country, uh, these two are getting very, very strongly interconnected. And that's because of a fundamental design principle that they have followed, which, which basically says that uh, I want to get the whole supply chain. I want to get all the industry covered. So if I take somebody in the center, a central node, and then make them make their compliance link to people that they are doing business with, either on the supplier side or on the customer side, then we eventually, over a period of time, get everybody involved. So in 2017, this whole thing started. And uh, I think right now it's going exactly as, as they would have uh, liked. And more and more we are seeing, uh, you know, companies adopting this, right? So what, what used to happen earlier in compliances, very few filings. It was never a CXO level concern. Uh, there was never any, you know, digital intervention. Uh, there was hardly any surveillance. Whatever used to happen, used to happen very, very manually and in a state-by-state -state kind of a fashion. Um, and, and, and lastly, like there was you know, the compliance data didn't really mean much, right, for, for, for the companies. And supply chain was a, a completely different area, uh, which had, uh, you know, some interactions maybe with the finance team, but but largely it was its own animal, right? Um, now, as I mentioned, uh, after GST, right, there has been uh, a constant, you know, every year there is something or the other kind of coming in, 17 GST, then EWA bill, then ITC restrictions came in 2019. Uh, e-invoicing came into the country in 2020. Uh, in 21, there is like things related to TDS and TCS that, are, that have come in. And we're fairly confident that this will continue as, as, as a regime which will keep adding more and more things, right? And, and therefore, uh, you know, the, the, uh, the compliances, while many will start to, you know, form a overall an aggregate that people will have to think about in totality and not like, you know, se separate components, right? Now, in our opinion, 100% of the businesses, right, find it very difficult to achieve complete compliance, right? And 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 the reason for that is uh, we are, you know, our, our whole country is acting like a startup right now, right? So there's things changing. There are things which are, uh, you know, tax laws which are changing. Uh, we implement something and then we, we figure out ways to tweak it to make it, you know, kind of either take it broader or to remove some of the pains. Uh, the government rules are becoming more and more stringent. Uh, so especially with technology, uh, based, uh, uh, you know, kind of surveillance coming in, uh, this is becoming much, much easier for them to do and, and do it much more, I would say, objectively. And therefore, you know, they're going to do it more and more, right? Uh, the business systems that we have are actually fairly weak and, and non-adaptive to all the changes that are happening around us, right? So in the larger companies, you know, they may have more rigid systems. In the in the smaller companies, they may have weaker systems. But, but the, the situation is kind of business systems uh, you know, require some degree of handholding. Uh, there's many, many counterparties involved. Uh, you guys are all uh, probably aware in, in, in and, and dealing in some form or fashion with your vendor base to deal with ITC credits and so on and so forth. Uh, with invoicing coming in, probably some of you guys are starting to think about how do we best deal with our distributors and so on using the same same data, same platform. And and lastly, there is a, a real-time kind of approach uh, that is that is coming through uh, you know, all the way in our in our in our taxation and compliance supply chain, uh, as opposed to you know we went from once a year 
kind of a you know uh, a system to then you know once a month twice a month kind of a system to now it is coming more and more uh, you know real time so what we also believe is that uh, um, especially any any of you uh, you know who who deal with you know shareholders and so on right we believe actually especially in developing markets uh, the role of compliance is actually more than just check the box if you if you do it well right so 10 years back you know compliance was largely optional right uh, good you know there's some people who did it well uh, other people who didn't uh, right uh, now i think as the compliance regime is becoming stricter and 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 notices and all of these things are becoming more and more common uh, what a lot of global investors are also thinking about is how do we know that there is a good company in in the developed markets right so they look at compliance as a very strong signal of quality and governance right so because they know that you know macros in in in, in ems uh, keep changing uh, tax laws keep changing currency policy all of these things keep changing but what you do in terms of your compliance is is 100% in your control right uh, and and that is seen as a very strong uh, signal of intent and and you can see on the right um, you know a, a meaningful number of people feel that they would play, pay a meaningful premium uh, for for uh, governance right um, yeah so now uh, as we mentioned earlier that you know a lot of companies find it difficult to be compliant right but that also is other than just compliance it is also uh, a significant financial burden right and, and let me kind of uh, take a minute to explain that uh, especially for gst and and now kind of e invoicing as well there is fair degree of gaps uh, that show up in terms of what ideally should be uh, getting filed from any side versus what is being done right uh, so 40% of vendors are are not electronic invoicing compliant right 15% of gst ins do not file you know 3b right uh, 60% of businesses do not claim their full input tax credits right and therefore what happens is in our opinion this is again based on our data maybe you know some of you may resonate with this some of you may not uh, but there is 5 to 7% of working capital that gets blocked uh, and 6 to 8% of pbt that can actually be impacted because of just leakages all the way through which uh sometimes you know just slip through multiple departments or slip through uh i would say uh you know internal internal systems but at a cfo level these are all slippages that kind of eventually add up so these are not small amounts right so the other thing that is also now happening is as i said early on supply chain and compliance is getting connected right so there are other things that that people are finding difficult to manage in this in this world of you know digital compliance and so on right so there's a lot of uh bandwidth that gets consumed in in manual activities right uh resolution with with partners communication with vendors uh you know any kind of you know lapses audits right just because things are happening at a much higher frequency it it is now consuming more and more time of the direct tax or the indirect tax teams right um uh, cash flow visibility uh creates uh you know there are issues there um you know the the, the processes that we have are sometimes you know full of um you know errors and 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 those can result in penalties later on and invoice management and all these kind of things are 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 broken right and and you'll see you know some of these questions on the right um uh, you know if you are in a in a terrific shape then these questions wouldn't resonate if you are like any other normal company i would say in the 75 80% of the companies many of these things might resonate with you now when you when you think about like uh you know in a modern for a modern cfo right what are the things that are within their purview right there are these four or five planks that at least how we see it planning and budgeting uh compliance uh payments and credit management vendor distributor management and then record keepings and and reconciliations right so now when you think about uh the, the two layers of you know financial compliance and record keeping and so on right uh so that's where obviously you know a lot of you guys would be working with big fours and so on and so forth now in our opinion uh especially when it comes down to real time uh, taxation and compliance right uh, that's where i think they start to struggle a little bit they are obviously you know uh, there are many things in which they are very good audits and what not but they are not tech first and they use legacy systems to solve their problems right which are fundamentally technology problems right and and the mix of teams and the mix of investment is actually you know as it, as it should be from their side which is largely you know i would say manual uh, and and people oriented investments and 
and and relatively smaller you know technology investments and then just in terms of uh, you know common work benching by what what we mean is having systems which allow for multiple people to look at the same thing uh, same data right is uh, and what we call a platform level approach that's just not something that they do right and and again so they would at best you know take your data in excel process it and and do whatever and then it becomes you know a file that could be out of sync with other sources and so on uh, and obviously you know they will do a lot of things but that creates a lot of dependencies and that takes away your team's control right similarly when you look at conventional you know erp systems right um, you know many of them we see them uh, struggling uh, without taking any names with with multiple aspects of changes that are coming into the country uh, purely because uh, you know at this point of time india is not big business for for many of these guys right it's an important strategic market but in terms of revenue maybe like 20th 25th whatever it is or maybe maybe even lower right um, and they have a lot of i would say uh, they were not really built for for such real time use cases and and they were built in like desktop kind of in era and so on right while some of them are going towards the cloud a uh, lo- lot of them have legacy issues uh, because of which they're not agile and and changes that that you have to do either become very very expensive uh, dealing with system integrators and what not or if it's happening at an oem level can take months if not years to uh, you know to uh, to implement right and 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 fundamentally you know uh, uh, on finance and local laws local regulations uh, that's not kind of how necessarily uh, their their strength while, while they have obviously many other strengths right so what we believe is that that you know given how the country has evolved given how compliance has evolved there is a third plank between uh, let's say an auditor financial auditor and so on like like a big four or an erp company that's where we are trying to play and we believe that the businesses uh, that that think about their reputation very actively think about their compliance very actively are starting to adopt our technology uh, solutions to facilitate this right um, so now if you know in our opinion if you had a couple of things or two or three things that you would want to do uh, uh, from a compliance standpoint what would, what would those be right that would be digital everything right from invoices to filings to payment everything uh, and and government is actually digitizing everything so whether you like it or not that is happening second is automation uh, and programmable whatever is programmable should be programmed right uh, and that leads to you know easier reconciliations and what not and third is a single source of data uh, that everybody can agree upon your erp your auditor your internal teams the government everybody uh, kind of agrees upon that right so these are the three uh, core design principles and and we believe uh, that's the pain that we are trying to solve uh, and and um, how how we how we do this is by creating essentially a network where you sit in the center your vendors and your distributors sit on the same platform your accountant or auditor has access to this platform with you know with permissions and what not and and that gets you connected that gets you all on the on the same pages and and eventually right that leads to uh, this is where we come in we connect to uh, through multiple means to your underlying systems sap tally oracle custom erps any of these systems uh, and we 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 ingest your data in whichever format is is convenient to you or is is uh, you know appropriate for you and then we we help take your data uh, the right packet of data with the right permissions and the right visibility whichever counterpart needs to be there and and what we maintain is a is a source that you can query any time and and figure out whether uh, you know what did i go you know give to a vendor what did i give to a government and what not right without transforming or changing your your underlying data that you may need for your your purposes so yeah so i think in our opinion by 2024 uh, this is how the world will look uh, business processes will be largely be automated or will be going very very fast towards high degree of automation uh there would be ai based surveillance for tax compliance we have already seen that with the, the number of companies uh the direct and indirect tax systems are getting very very close to uh, linking uh, we've seen uh, you know tds and other things kind of coming in uh the vendor and distributor ecosystem so it's you know compliance is not all bad uh it is leading to the digitization and platformization across the company country that is happening will lead to a phenomenal shift in vendor and distributor ecosystems coming on the same platform and and eventually credit and and discounting will become that much uh, you know easier and 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 stronger um and and in our opinion kind of uh, technology is going to be the play here not manual systems in in generally what we see is 
you know, uh, the, the, the route that people take is, you know, they scale up the workforce, then they upgrade the workforce, you know, get better people in and smarter people in, then they get audit firms, you know, and then eventually they adopt a technology that, that does it, right, generally. Um, what, what you can do is, is bring in the experts and, and bring technology solutions early, uh, which, which actually reduces your friction. Uh, you know, it, it may take a little bit of time, but, but then kind of, you know, you, 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 can, you can sleep easily after that. Uh, this is kind of the number of companies, uh, you know, actually 3,000 plus enterprises that today use us across industry, uh, size, MNC, Indian, all of these. Uh, we already process uh, roughly 10% of India's GDP on our platform. That's the scale at which we, we, we operate and, and we provide a level of security, um, you, know, you know, stability and so on that, that many of your teams uh, would want and what, where you would want to, you know, store your data. Uh, and, and that's like the second largest platform in our opinion after, you know, kind of the government uh, at this point of time. Uh, we've got uh, and so forth. And, uh, and yeah, so I think this is kind of where we are. Today we are providing a bunch of uh, uh, solutions with regards to only uh, compliance. And this is where we are going to make your vendor network, discounting and customer networks. This is kind of our journey. Um, you know, um, would be lovely to talk to you guys, uh, hear from you on, if, if anything uh, we can solve for you, uh, this is our email ID. Thanks a lot, everybody. Well, thank you so here. much, sir, for sharing your expertise with us. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to remind our delegates to tag us on social media using the hashtag ETGDI Summit. And also let me remind you that the more you participate in the features on this virtual platform, the greater your chance of winning gift vouchers. The top two winners will win gift vouchers worth 5,000 rupees. The winners from positions 3 to 9 will receive gift vouchers worth 2,500 rupees. And the winners from positions 10 to 29 will win gift vouchers worth 1,000 rupees. So make sure that you earn a lot of points. On that note, next is a power-packed panel discussion, which you definitely shouldn't miss. So join us there.